there's all sort of uh, all sorts of TikTok trends recently, and there's huge interest in hydrogen peroxide for different things. So it's been a learning process for our team to discover all these home remedies that people have been doing for apparently a long time. Some of them are safe, some of them are not safe, some of them are recommended, some of them are not. At this time, we follow the one that people say that is it safe to clean your ears with hydrogen peroxide or a solution of hydrogen peroxide? Is this true? How safe is this? How can we do this? And if it's something that it should be done at home or should be done on a medical facility, please clarify this for us. Sure. Well, the short answer is yes, but there are some provisos. I love hydrogen peroxide. Uh, as one of the great agents that can help kind of uh, soften up wax to make it come out easier. However, I think it's important to know that wax is a normal production. Uh, we all have wax and we have it for a reason. It fights bacteria, it helps to lubricate the, uh, the inner parts of the ear canal, and it's a part of the natural process by which the ear uh, self cleans. So uh, having some wax in your ear is not a problem, as long as it's not in impairing your hearing, it's not dirty, it's not a sign of poor hygiene. Now, that being said, some people happen to produce more wax and some people happen to produce more dry wax. And sometimes those who produce more or more dry wax, uh, it doesn't self-clean, it can get impacted. And what we call impacted cerumen or a wax plug. And there are many ways to take care of it. Um, probably the safest and the, the safest way to do it is under direct visualization under a microscope with a professional ear, nose and throat doctor. Would be the would be the safest way to do it, but there are many home remedies that can that can be tried and have been successful over the years. I personally am a big fan of peroxide. A couple of drops with an eyedropper lay on the side of your head uh, and let it kind of soften things up. And in the shower, just like if you got water in your ear, you can you can kind of shake your head like that and have it come out. I would caution against Q-tips. Believe it or not, Q-tips are about exactly the right size of your ear canal, but the way Q-tips work is to clean the outside of the ear, but if you have wax on the inside of the ear canal, it's going to work like a musket, and it's just going to push the wax in further and cause more troubles, cause hearing loss. Now, peroxide can be used for most patients, uh, or most anybody who have uh, ear uh, uh, earwax, uh, but there are a few patients for whom it should not be used, and that's particular in patients who have had uh, perforation or a hole in the eardrum, or have ear tubes in their ear or they're not 100% sure the status of their eardrum. In patients who have holes in the eardrum or they have tubes in the ear like they may have gotten when they were younger or a hole that was left after tube fell out, um, getting peroxide into the middle ear can not only be very painful, uh, but it can also predispose you to an infection and that can lead to problems and, uh, and discomfort and additional hearing loss and increasing size of the perforation in the first place. So. Unless you really know the status of your ear canal, you probably shouldn't be uh, putting anything in your ear uh, that, that is liquid and certainly not uh, anything, as they say, smaller than your elbow. Is this, is, is this peroxide, um, so is it a solution? Is it 100%? Like, I know that the one we get at the store or the pharmacy is already, um, it's not pure, or if you can That's correct right. that. I, I, I Confess, I forget the the over the counter hydrogen peroxide um, concentration, but it's in a brown bottle. Uh, it's because it's deactivated by light. That's why it's in a, it's a it's in brown bottle. So, um, but straight out of the bottle is fine. If peroxide stings or burns, it probably means that you have some sort of either irritation of your ear canal, uh, or you have a hole in your eardrum and you shouldn't be using it. So, if you happen to use it once. Uh, and you and you do notice discomfort or pain, uh, it shouldn't be used anymore, and you should have your your local doctor or your local ENT take a look at it. You touched something very important, which are Q-tips, and and just to provide a bit of context to our viewers, um, is this something that that I mean, it, it sh it, should we cleaning our ears with Q-tips every day after we shower? Uh, right. I know that you you mentioned that sometimes if you produce a lot of wax, you might be just pushing it in, which is not good. Um, so is there a rule or we should not use Q-tips at all? I think Q-tips can be used if they're used safely. Um, th what I tell patients is that you can grab it right at the fuzz, right where the fuzz is. 
so that it's very kind of a short stump of just the fuzz at the top of the Q-tip. That way you're not really going in much further than the entire length of the, of the Q-tip itself. Your ear canal is about twice that length, maybe a little bit less. So you're not gonna cause too many injuries. That being said, the skin of the ear canal is very delicate, uh, certainly as we get older, certainly if you've had surgery in the past, uh, or if you're prone to getting ear infections in the first place, the skin can be very delicate and doesn't take much injury a scratching, even as something that we think is as soft like a Q-tip that can cause some irritation to the skin and predispose to or towards infections. So I recommend to keep Q-tips out of the ear canal completely, only at the very opening and around the outside here, but it shouldn't go inside the ear canal. Q-tips really should be used for cleaning your computer keyboards and for, for other things, but not for your, not for your ears. You mentioned that there is dry wax and there's like softer wax. What is the difference and, and who are, is there people who are more, um, is there a group of people who are more, um, produce this wax more than others? There's some evidence to suggest that there may be a genetic component, meaning it may run in families, the type of wax that you have. Some people are more waxy, um, meaning more kind of soft and almost like a, um, like a, like a paste. Uh, I know that may sound disgusting, but, and there's some people who, for whom it's very, it's very hard. Wax isn't just wax. Wax really is a combination of the waxy glands, which is like a, a like a, a gland that makes wax, but it's also a mixture of um, what we call desquamated skin or the skin that normally sloughs off from the rest of our body or our scalp and inside the ear canal is no exception either. So wax is really a combination uh, of wax and kind of dead skin. Some people it's very hard. As we get older uh, and we get a little more dehydrated, the skin does tend to get, excuse me, the wax does tend to get a little harder. And in those cases, it, uh, it would need to come out uh, or would be easier to come out with um, direct, direct visualization and with, with micro instruments in the, in the doctor's office. Um, many um, urgent care centers and primary care doctors uh, will use uh, irrigation inside the ear to kind of flush the ear out with a mixture of either warm water and peroxide or sometimes just peroxide. And that's okay, it just has to be done properly. And it has to, you have to obtain a proper history from the patient to know if they've ever had ear surgery, if they've had ear tubes, if they've had any recent infections, if they have a known hole in their eardrum. You definitely don't want to be um, instilling pressure, certainly not too much pressure into an area that could cause, cause problems. But the fact is, is that Irrigations like that happen thousands of times per day in the United States without any problems. Uh, so most of the time it's fine, but occasionally uh, and in certain situations, it's not fine. And the trick is to know who those patients are gonna be prior to, prior to the irrigations. Um, do you think that we should be visiting an ENT regularly if we have a, a wax problem with our ears? So we feel that it's, it's every time if people use Q-tips regularly, they, they, they keep pulling like a whole bunch of, of, of wax or the Q-tip comes out like super, you know, in a well, darker uh, color. You know, a pound of prevention is worth, I mean, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Uh, so if you're able to prevent issues by keeping your wax soft with peroxide or sometimes baby oil or mineral oil, sweet oil, uh, something something like that uh, can can help as well to really soften the wax. The wax will normally migrate out on its own. Uh, using Q-tips is not, again, not something that will help you because the natural tendency is for the ear canal is to self-clean. The things are going to go from deep to superficial and then fall out. And then you go like this and it just kind of falls out or falls out in the shower, flakes out, something like that. So every time you use a Q-tip, you're pushing it back in. So it's kind of counterproductive to what you really want to happen is the wax come out. But even above and beyond that, it's important to remember that wax itself is actually good. It fights bacteria. It helps to kind of lubricate this, the inner parts of the ear to help the, the dead skin come out as well. Uh, and it has a whole host of other, other uh, potential uh, antibacterial and antifungal properties. Uh, so we shouldn't be so quick to get rid of it. Uh, when you should get rid of it is not because you have a lot of it, or when you should visit the ear, nose and throat doctor is when it's so much that you can't get rid of it and your hearing, your hearing is affected. Uh, if your hearing is affected or there's associated pain or discomfort, or you have anything other than just a sense of, oh, I feel like there's something in there or my Q-tip is brown when I take it out, uh, then, then, then there's really um, 
more important to understand that this is all part of a natural process and it has nothing to do with being clean or dirty. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you think it's important for our audiences to know or to understand, or if there's any uh, common misconceptions or myths out there uh, regarding um, or the, the, the health of our, ear, of our ears that you should clarify? I think there are a variety of um, home remedies that have been um, suggested in the past several years, um, some uh, as some as uh, technically complicated as a, as a little camera that you could put in your ear to assess how much wax you have, others to little spinning devices and little curettes that can, can clean out the ear. It's just a very long standing traditional treatments such as ear candling. Um, None of them really are, are particularly helpful uh, or frankly, for most patients, necessary. But if there's any doubt um, of, on behalf of the individual and there's any concern whatsoever, just go see your local friendly neighborhood, ear, nose and throat doctor, and they'll be more than happy to take a look uh, and make sure that everything's okay. And if everything's not okay, they'll certainly know how to take care of it.